You're listening to The Dental Guys. There's a new scanner in town. A couple of years ago, Medit broke into the scanning market with the i500 and we sort of downplayed it, but are they here to stay? We review the newest data that's now been published showing some surprising things about this new scanner. We also discuss barriers to implementation of scanning in your practice. Is it time to buy now or is it time to wait? This week on The Dental Guys. When the dental guys need an infection prevention product, we turn to Kerr and their Total Care line. Kerr has been an industry leader in infection control and prevention products for years. And when we think of infection control, caviside and cavi wipes are the first things that come to our minds. It's automatic and there's a reason for that. Kerr knows dentistry and their products work. The dental guys trust Kerr products in our offices and you should too. Stay safe with Kerr Total Care. Looking for a lab that understands the bridge between art and science? Check out the Dental Crafters Network. Dental Crafters, one relationship, infinite possibilities. Contact them at 1-800-472-8302 or at dentalcrafters.net. Do you want to learn to predictably place and restore dental implants using the most modern science and technology? We are talking 60 hours of CE in a comprehensive curriculum and live surgical implant placement on pre-selected patients. Head over to restorativedrivenimplants.com to learn more today. And welcome to this week's episode of The Dental Guys. I'm John, The Dental Guy. And I'm Wes, The Dental Guy. And here we are, Wes, about a year away from the last time that you and I were at a significant dental meeting, a real dental meeting, a year post COVID in the dental world. This is a bizarre time right now. Looking back, I mean, I was a year ago, Hmm. I was at a course uh, at the Mall of America. I mean, the, at the time I look back, I'm like the least safe place in the whole world. I guess I think about now, like, you know, we walked through the mall. We, we, we saw this thing called a movie in a theater. I mean, what's that all about? I, I don't even remember what that felt like now. It's so Actually, bizarre. I remember what it feels like to go to a movie because I just went to my first movie in over a year. You did. What did you see? Yep. I saw um, Crudes 2. Yeah. It was, nice. it was hilarious. Went with uh, nice. Malia. Laura and I are vaccinated. And uh, yeah, that's a good there was feeling. only two other people in the entire theater. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> love it socially distanced wear a mask i had popcorn lard did too wow so, so you felt like did you feel like a human being again it was amazing i mean it I'm had serious. to be like in and, and it was we're all great. having these experiences now of like going back to some kind of normal and i mean they're talking about how even cdc now is talking about recommending that older people go visit their family because, you know, it's been so long since they, I mean, vaccinated, quote unquote, okay, may specify that vaccinated older people. Vaccinated. Because it's been so long. I mean, there's comes a point where your mental health takes a toll from all of this, you know? And uh, man, I'm so ready. And I think the fact that the spring is coming, the sun is coming out. I mean, COVID plus winter, that's a tough gig, man. Sitting in the house, it's cold can't go do anything i mean man i'm so ready for that yeah i'm ready for meetings i'm ready to get back into like learning some stuff i mean like we have some great ideas for shows i mean like you know i feel like the dental guys have been on a like work um like push as hard as you can because yeah you've got to do the things and, and John, I've got some exciting things that we may be talking about uh, in regards to, you know, um, what I've been doing in, in, in my business. And um, that'll be coming up in the near future. Um, and uh, we, we talked about this years ago. And um, but that's going to be fun. There's some other things that I'm excited to like rekindle relationships that were started before COVID. You know, we have right. excellent relationships with 
uh, you know, spear education, even through uh, COVID. And we haven't yet to be back out to the spear campus. Both of us have credits there at spear. Um, That's right. And so we're excited about that. There's some other things that we want to take as far as personal development wise, you know, like uh, we've talked about taking uh, courses from Paul Homily. And yep. uh, is that right, John? And then, yeah, and then also absolutely. getting back to like some of these good meetings, like the American Academy of Fixed Prostodontics. I know we had a meeting planned also with a fixed prostodontics, um, um, Ohio uh, Dental Society. I yep. think uh, Ohio State was putting on yep. a pros ish thing like last year, and we were invited to help kind of cover that. Uh, that got shut down. I'm, I'm seeing some of these meetings come back in limited form. Um, yeah, I mean, our lecture for Academy of Austin Integration drops this next week uh, yeah. for, uh, well, of course, when we're recording this, it'll be a few weeks later when you guys are listening to this. But, you know, coming right up, uh, we were able to record that. And the AO did all the courses, as you guys all know, an all virtual meeting this year. And that's what I think a lot of uh, these these meetings are going to. And, and and we see value in that and, and, and all of that. And we've all, I think anybody listening to the show has benefited from virtual learning um, through the CE time, but there's just nothing like, uh, an in-person meeting. And we all know that. And there's nothing like, you know, hands-on learning for sure. So yeah, we're excited about that, but we do have some great shows coming up in the next just couple of months of people that are already lined up and locked and loaded for some great discussion. And on that note, really what today's show is going to focus on is going to be kind of a little bit of an intro for another really big, exciting show we're going to be doing with Mark Ludlow of University of South Carolina, who's going to be coming back to do another scanner roundup. You know, we had gonna one with it. him. Oh, yeah. And he's had, you know, he's talked about how he's had nothing but but time basically through COVID to test Study. scanners and software and, you know, do all the stuff with that. And so he's going to be coming back on the show give us an update on kind of the state of the science of, of digital scanning. But today's show, we're going to start talking about some very interesting things happening from Medit. And uh, so hang with us after a short message from our sponsor. We're going to be back talking about the Medit scanner, what it means for dentistry, and kind of talking about a little bit with implementation of scanning. Why has it been so hard to penetrate the market with scanners? So hang tight with us just a minute. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Justin Goodbray with Financially Simple. So perhaps you're considering buying your first practice or your second, third, or fourth. Here's a tip for you. One of the first things you need to do is decide on the practice name. We often see the name of the dentist in the practice name, and there's certainly nothing wrong with this approach. However, do you intend to sell the practice in a 10-year time frame, or do you plan on having more than one location? If so, you probably want to choose a corporate sounding name rather than using your own name. Next, you need to make sure your desired practice name is available both as a web domain and as a type of entity you'll operate at the state level. Before long, you and the practice will become known as one, so choose your name wisely. For more information about this and other dental related topics, visit financiallysimple.com forward slash dentist. This tip is for informational purposes only. Please speak with a competent financial advisor regarding your specific needs. Justin Goodbread is a registered investment advisor with Heritage Investors. Visit heritageinvestor.com, financiallysimple.com for additional information. And we're back, John. And, you know, we talked about scanning. Well, we've talked about scanning ever since you weren't scanning and I was scanning. Let's just yep. recap here for new listeners is... I've been a digital scanner since 2009, okay? So currently, right now, uh, John and I both uh, use digital scanners in our practice, right? Uh, we are currently using a technology from that was um, uh, basically bought from MIT, a group called Bronte's Group, uh, which was video capture of... Uh, uh, dentistry or intraoral scanning basically is video capture and um, 3M bought that and now Midmark owns that um, whole TrueDef scanning um, system mm -hmm. and uh, basically uh, we've been using it for Invisalign yes that's right yep. we are grandfathered in we can use it right. for Invisalign one Number of the two, couple we've been using it for splints I've been using it for sleep appliances I've been using it for night guards. I've been using it for uh, implant um, 
guides. I've been using it primarily. The number one use in our practice is the use of it for crown and bridge. I would say 99.9% of all my restorations, single unit, two units, even some three unit bridges is done with intra oil scanning um, with the TrueDef. Why yep. and what have I seen over the past uh, nine to 10 years of using this scanner, or actually more than 10 years now, 11 years, I've upgraded to the TrueDef, obviously from the original chairside oral scanner. And some of you might say, well, I don't even know what a TrueDef is. It was one of the first pieces of technology that 3M jumped on. But that being said, what has my experience been with scanning? It's been amazing. Like it's been amazing, right? I have had, I have nothing to say, but just like, it's a game changer for my Mm -hmm. practice, right, John? The question, John, is how has it helped you in your practice be a better dentist? I want to hear it because you were resistant, right? Mm -hmm. And really had an opportunity to jump into scanning for really on the, on the cheap, really. And so tell us about your experience and you're using a true def and, um, Mm -hmm. and where you're at right now, what are you using it for? Yeah. You know, it totally, uh, changed my practice as well. You know, I was definitely, uh, you know, an impression guy and still am for a lot of things. Uh, but saw that, you know, the data was there uh, showing that scanning was, was getting better and better all the time. And, uh, you know, I, I took a look at that system and, and was able to, uh, get one for relatively inexpensive to try and, uh, felt like, you know, it's probably worth giving it a shot and seeing what it can do for me. Um, and, you know, would never go back for single tooth, uh, or like Wes said, you know, one to three units in the posterior, kind of our day to day bread and butter dentistry. Um, that's what the scanner really excels at. I think that's really what a lot of digital scanners excel at. I mean, there's some whiz bang stuff you can do with it. Full arch with other scanners or with this scanner, but really, I think where your true savings and your efficiency and your fun part of using the scanner is for things that we do day to day in, in in dentistry, like, uh, you know, single tooth dentistry, uh, posterior single crowns and things like that. So at first I was pretty hesitant just because, you know, impressions were working great for me. I wasn't having any problems and uh, I kind of knew what my limitations were with that. And I still think that even to this day, and we're going to talk about this a little bit more that impressions are still in many ways, uh, you know, they, they're, they're the best it's for certain applications, but I think that our scanners are incredible now to the point where clinical acceptability is there 100% for our posterior single unit restorations. And if you go back and listen to our episodes on scanning, you'll, you'll kind of see our journey with this, that, you know, we've gone through discussion of how to choose a scanner, what's available. Uh, and then we've also talked about the disadvantages of scanning, what you can't do or what you can't do predictably. And really none of that has changed since our last big recap of that. And we're going to be talking to Mark Ludlow about that in a, about a month or so. And talking to him about what's doable now. So I think for me, I, you know, I look at it and I think I would not go back. Um, I'm, you know, two doctors using one scanner working fine. Um, but, but bringing us to today's show, yeah, well, you know, you what has changed? The other day, like, here's the thing, like, just don't yeah. even hide, right? You called yeah. me the other day, you made a trip, right? To a dental meeting. Well, the right first there. way it started was I had a rep from an implant company come to my office and he's talking to me wait a minute about an implants and he says he has a scanner right so nobel comes Mm. to my office and says hey we'd like to sell you some implants and i said well you know you i heard there's their spiel and i said that's interesting i'm not i don't know that i want to buy your implants however um that's interesting. I'm glad you're here. And we always, I always like talking to implant reps if they know what they're talking about. And he said, well, um, we also do, we also are getting into the digital scanner market. And I said, really? He said, yeah. I said, we're selling this thing called the Medit. And I, of course I know the Medit scanner. We've talked about it on the show a little bit. And I said, really, tell me more about this. And so he shows me that, that Nobel has basically invested in licensing the cell the Medit scanner as part of their comprehensive solution for digital dentistry to be able to do things, things like implant scanning, you know, they have a scan body library now, and they're really trying to implement 
digital into their world. Uh, and it turns out as I started looking into this, you know, cause a year ago, Medit was its own thing. It was its own company. Uh, if you wanted to buy this scanner, you had to have support from that company, uh, or there were a couple of smaller companies selling it, uh, that, you know, you might not have any local support. Now we have Nobel reps supporting it. Now we have cable Kerr jumping behind it, which is interesting. Uh, so we have multiple companies now that have actually taken this and they have implemented it in. And I think, I guess that's Medit's approach to the marketplace is they're going to, you know, get other companies to do the distribution and rather than do it on, the, on their own. So I talked to the Nobel fellow and he said, yeah, I bring it by and get, let you do a demo. I said, sure, bring it by. I'd like to check it out. So he brings it by and yes, as Wes said, that even sparked me going down to a meeting to check it out and uh, go to the exhibits to look at it one more time. So I called Wes and I said, you know, this is interesting because we talked about the scanner a year ago. It's now showing up all over the place, all over the place. And the question is, is it worth anything? No, because wait, let's hold on just a minute. Yeah. Before we yeah. get into that, right? I, I, what in the world is going on here? Okay. Because in the prep for the show here, John, I'm looking at some things and I'm thinking, why are these companies adopting scanners, right? What, mm -hmm. what is in it for them? Like, right? right. If, if market proliferation is only, let's just say 10% of all impressions are, you know, digital, yeah, digital. So why, why are they just doing this? to say we have digital dentistry? Is it because their software, like if you look at Nobel's thing, I think like, you know, I'm just going to flip over here to the browser and their website. They're, they're really, they're really touting this digital workflow, right? Yeah. Everybody wants the digital workflow. What's interesting about this though, you don't have to have a scanner to do a digital workflow, right? Yep. Because your your impression, your impression, John, is going to be scanned in at the dental lab using maybe even a Medit T scanner, which is what they have now. They have their own impression scanner. And it's so why is it just to say I've got one? Right? Is mm. it just to say I have this? I mean, Cavo Kerr, okay? Flip over here. Cavo. It took me 10 minutes to actually fa find the Cavo X500, which is the iMedit 500, okay? Is it just like if you go to the product categories under under Cavo, okay? And then you're like under products, and then you go to imaging solutions portfolio okay look at what they've done they have partnered yep or have some relationship now with some of the leaders dexas yep. right gen Dex, well this is the same thing that iPad. midmark did you know when midmark bought the true def yeah you know i remember right us here. both saying midmark really midmark chairs right exactly you make chairs what? and lights and you make <laughs> you make ultrasonic cleaners and and you're getting into the scanner market. And what this told me, and I think Wes and I, we talked about this, you know, these companies want this, they want to have, like you said, a comprehensive portfolio. If someone says, hey, do you, do you guys believe in digital dentistry? Well, there's kind of two ways to do that. You know, you can either invent something, you can create something, or you can buy something and you can yeah. integrate that into your workflow. And I think that has been the approach with Midmark, it's now the approach with Cavo, Nobel, these companies that are investing into this Medit scanner, mm -hmm. they're saying, oh, this is ours now. It's really not theirs, but they're making it a part of their portfolio to say, yeah, you know, we believe in digital. See, here you go. Look. So the so that, that yeah, it kind of is changing the way that we think about this because at the beginning, as you know, Wes, it was always about, you know, this company designed a new scanner. And now they're still that's still going on. Our biggest but thing now we're, it was that it that it had no data by, behind it, right? Right. So yeah. A year really ago, cool. a year ago when we talked about it, we dismissed the scanner out of hand because we said there's no published data. 
There was nothing. And there was nothing until really less than probably six months ago. Mm. Less than six months ago, we start seeing studies. That means they've been doing studies for a little while. It's just nothing had been released mm. because it takes time, as we know, talking to Steve Eckert from Jomi, uh, that it takes time for an article to go from you know the abstract submission to publication. Of course, you have to do all the testing. So as we started looking, I, I kind of looked back at this again the other day when I called you, Wes. I said, all right, well, let's look at when this stuff actually started coming out. You know, what's the significance of some of the studies? And so we're going to go over that a little bit today with you guys on the show, because we believe, as you know, listening to the dental guys, you know that our whole thing is not just go buy a scanner. It's what scanner is actually working, what is the best what works for what you need in your practice? Because I think those are both very different questions. Don't you think Wes, like what's best for one office might be completely different than what's best for another. Oh, man. You have to decide what you want to do with your scanner or is your goal to do full arch implant scanning and trying to make this workflow work the best you possibly can for full arch or is your goal to do quadrant based single tooth or two to three unit dentistry in the posterior. Like that's man, why we need to talk. We need to talk about the, that. That's exactly right. We need to talk about, well, one, right. What's the data say right now. Okay. Yep. When it comes to some of the top scanners on the market or really what we're hearing about in the med it being kind of proliferating into the market, right. They're making some corporate relationships there. And so for seeing like what we said is that, a single unit crown, right, is what you're trying to, right, you're trying to replace impression material with something that's equal to, right, or better than impression material, right? So that's right. Is that is that possible, right? Well, I think it is with the Medit, right, as it is with actually most other scanners, right? I would say right. that most other scanners, um, I don't know that one is any better maybe there's workflow differences but from a standpoint of like fit and finish right you scan for a single unit number three 14 19 and 20 or maybe yeah, we could do 22 right john you just you <laughs> scan for the first molar you know which is what everybody's crowning right and you get it you send a scan back to the lab you're going to get a nice crown back okay depending on how your lab handles that let's take the lab out of the equation but John, tell us a little bit about this study right here, the uh, the study out of University of Zurich. Yeah, so this was an interesting study. This was, uh, you know, this looked at for single unit um, intraoral scanning systems for single tooth prep in vitro. So this is something that they they wanted to look at just what we're probably most of us are going to be doing, you know, which is a single unit. Uh, study. This goes back. This is probably one of the earliest things that was published. I think maybe the earliest that was peer reviewed data reviewed or uh, peer reviewed and and, and uh, put out there in, in uh, Journal of the American Dental Association came out of Zurich. And so they state, man, they studied, I have to give a lot of credit to this study because they, they had a lot of systems in here, a lot of systems, and they were the newest systems, uh, the newest versions of each one from Trios, CareStream, Medit, iTero, uh, there were a ton of, of systems that were put in here. And they also compared it, which I like, to uh, a traditional impression material. Now, not surprisingly, the traditional impression material was the best. It was the best. However, was there a huge difference in the statistical significance between the precision values of these different scanners? There was not. And Wes, if you go down to the uh, one of the figures in there, I don't know if you've got that still pulled up, but it does show the plots showing the differences and the tails of confidence intervals and statistical significance showing that from a precision standpoint, there was not much difference. Now, in the trueness, there was a slight, slight drop off from impression material to scanning. Impression material was down in the 15 micron range, but when you got into scanning, a lot of the scanners were in the 20 to 60 micron range in trueness. So you start to think about that in microns and you think, well, what's, yeah, here it is. And if you're watching this on video, you'll see what I'm talking about here. 
Um, and then you start to think, well, how significant is that really? You know, it's not much different. And if you look at the precision and the confident interval, confidence interval there in the lower right, you'll see that precision is really no statistical significance between that and impression material. So what this should tell us is it should make us take notice that we're starting to see things overlapping more and more and more. Now this is single unit and this is ideal situation in vitro study, right? So we have to take that with a grain of salt. We have to take that absolutely with a grain of salt, but this is a good study that at least gets us thinking about, is there a big difference? Then we move over, I think now, to one of the next studies that came out, which is out of the JPD. Um, this is the study that was uh, that, that was uh, Pavlakis and uh, Michelinakis, and this was uh, showing a, a comparison between three intraoral scanners, and again, in vitro, uh, single-blinded. Um, and so they looked at the same basic scanners. Uh, they, they didn't have quite as many, but this was basically a Medit versus Trios and plan Mecca type of shootout. And so the conclusions from this, and you can dive into this a little bit, to, they were looking at a couple of things. They were looking at trueness, they were looking at precision, and they were also looking at the size of the file that was, was it overestimated in size or was it underestimated in size? And if you look at the Medit versus the Trios, there's the trueness right there and the, that we're showing you in the video here. They were very close, very, very close. Plan Mecca was not quite as good when it came to, to trueness. But then when you looked at uh, the difference in how they actually represented the model, the Medit did underestimate the size of the model more than the other two. But the conclusion of the article and the authors based upon the data here was that all of them were within 100 microns of, of accuracy. And so if the average accuracy of all three tested scanners is below 100 microns, that's really very good and clinically acceptable was their conclusion uh, for, for these different scanners. And uh, there's one other study uh, that, that was that's out there, but the majority of what we're seeing here is showing that number one, a lot of the scanners are pretty similar for single units, and number two, we're starting to see Medit showing up in the data, comparing pretty favorably to these other quote unquote bigger name scanners that have maybe been around a little bit longer. So I look at that and I think so far, Wes, it passes some of the initial what I would call a sniff test, right? It looks like it's reasonable. But the problem with these studies is they're still in vitro studies. We're not seeing data from patients. And so I do so worry about that. Uh, I think it makes me take notice because here's the other thing, right? Let's just be honest. We're all looking at dollars. We're all looking at dollars. So why, if this is a $100,000 scanner, I, would, I wouldn't even be thinking about this scanner. But this is a $20,000 scanner including everything you would need minus you have to supply your own computer. Yeah. Yeah. Th that deal doing like these group purchasing power situation. Mm -hmm. here. <clears throat> and so, yep. Uh, you're looking at it, you know, basically this is a, a medit bundle. Uh, you can just type in this on Google. I found it on Google and basically you can do, um, $18,000 is what it includes. The scanner includes lifetime support and then you get a six thousand um, dollar was that evident credit? I guess that's towards uh, lab credit or whatever. And then um, and then this one, I don't know what that that credit thing is for. Do you know that, John? I don't on that one. I, I'm guessing it's a credit to one of the companies to buy. Yeah. You know, it might be a lab or something along those lines. And then you know, see over here, the middle of the road, kind of like the best value. What they're showing is basically they're giving you. Um, a laptop, basically four grand for a laptop. You see, the thing is here, right, is that you're going to spend, but the time you train and everything, let's just say 25 grand. But man, I, I've been doing this for nine t or 10 years now plus, and it's the same cost. It's the same cost it was initially to jump into this for the most part. You know, mm -hmm. it's always this twenty-five thousand to thirty-five thousand dollar range. Okay, you can cheap out, right? 
and just get the scanner by your laptop or have one that you could plug it into. Mm -hmm. So implementation though, John, right? That's where I want to go with this here just in a minute. But it seems like now that we have some data to support really that the medic can perform equal Mm -hmm. to um, some of the best scanners on the market. You know, the Trios is one of the best value scanners on the market from a standpoint of like what it can do, right? It can yep. do a lot. And their software is very, very well developed and it's seasoned and all that. And as the software has matured on the Medit side, mm-hmm. we've seen that the software has even helped that scanner become a better scanner. And so the software is almost from what Mark was telling us the last time he was on the show, Mark Ludlow, that the software can be even more important than sometimes the hardware. That's right. right. And I think that's where a company like Medit is still evolving, most likely. And, you know, they that's something that remains to be seen because I'd like to talk to Mark about that and see what he thinks about the software Uh, and where it is compared to some of these other companies Mm. because yes you know we're starting to talk about software upgrades with the same hardware making a huge difference and wes and i have both seen that with even true definition that it's gotten better over time it's gotten quicker it has more algorithms to it you know we have an automatic heating up of the gun uh, or of the uh, wand algorithm that's now baked into the software because they knew that there were some fogging issues and so they fixed that and you know let alone the actual interpolation of the data and the speed and things like that. So my initial impressions with the, with the demo were pretty favorable, you know, scans quickly. Uh, it of course is color. There's no powder involved. It seemed like that worked pretty well. It is a disposable tip, but it was a very minimal cost for the amount of times you can autoclave the tip. Um, no support fees per month. There is a warranty that you eventually have to pay for after the first couple of years, depending on you know what you spend for it. But you know, even compared to what I'm paying now, it's significantly cheaper, which is one of the big selling points of Meta too, is costs being low up front and then also the ongoing costs being low. Um, the biggest thing that I'm looking at here, I'm talking to our lab and I'm asking some questions about the quality of the scans that they're getting. And I'm still talking with them about that because there were a couple of interesting things we saw with this kind of fuzziness on the scans that they showed me, but I think it might be just one uh, one scanner, maybe not all of them. So bottom line here is I think we have a potential on our hands here, Wes, if it, if it shakes out that somebody like Mark, who's really looked into the back, the back end of this stuff can give us a confirmation. This might be reasonable scanner to look at. And I think, you know, if you're listening to the show and you, you haven't tried the meta out, you should try it. If you're comparing it to some other scanners, you should compare it because now there's at least enough data that I think we can say, yeah, it compares. It compares. But Wes, let's talk about this. Let's talk about this implementation thing. Because we could talk about scanners all day. And I think really we're not the authority on that mark is, and we'll have him on the show shortly in the next few weeks. But you know, implementation of anything in dentistry is the hardest part of it when you buy technology. But let's talk about scanning. Let's talk about some of the barriers, Wes. Like why is it that the lab is still only getting 10% or less of their scans digitally. What's going on that's keeping people from getting into scanning? What do you think are some of the top problems? It's not being taught, it's not being taught in schools as much as, it, as mm. it, it's, it's not be taught. It's not being taught as a primary device to replace impression material. Mm. Right. I mean, if, if we're still teaching it in schools, um, you know, that impression material is the go to, right? Like if you said, okay, we're going to stop teaching impression material, Mm -hmm. right, for single unit crowns, we're going to be scanning from here forward, right? Well, that'd be, that'd be, that'd be a game changer, right? Yeah, that's a game changer. that, That would be a game changer. Has that happened yet? No. There's schools right now that have scanners, lots of scanners are in schools. Yeah. Probably every school that's out there is utilizing scanners. But when you show up in private practice, right, and you, like, think about this. When you're implementing um, this technology, right, you're going to wheel something into an operatory, right, and you're going to change everything that you're doing. You're going from 
taking an impression, which is glue on a tray and putting some goop in somebody's mouth and having them bite down most of the time and then w- getting up out of the chair and the assistant mm-hmm. brings the impression to you and says, yep, looks great. Make my temp, right? To wheeling a piece of equipment into the operatory, isolating the prep just like you would and turning on some software, right? To acquire the data and then sending it off. Right. I mean, it sounds easy. It sounds yeah, so But it's a easy. completely different world, isn't it? It's completely different. I'll tell you this, I'll tell you this for example. Okay. My my TrueDef has a touch screen and the, the software interface on the TrueDef is hands down the easiest, most brainless touch screen software you can possibly make. Ma- ma- I'm I mean, it's whether the scanner is yeah. harder to use or not, because the scanner is hard to use if you're not used to a TrueDef and trying to teach you how to use it. I'm talking about the software interface on the TrueDef. Upper arch, lower arch on the screen, hit the play, hit the stop, right? Yep. Okay. This is easy as can be. Bite left, right, and in the midline, okay? And then check my prep with a little check mark box on it, right? That's it. And then hit the yep. prescription tab at the bottom. I mean, that essentially is it for the true def. Okay. So what happens to me is my mouse or my touch screen goes down. Okay. Mm. Now Midmark has done what 3M has done, which is amazing customer service. You call them immediately. Like they're sending you a new monitor technician arrives the next day. I mean, I cannot say anything, but just like that, the transition from 3M to Midmark has been seamless. Okay. So kudos to whoever did that because it's been fantastic. Mm-hmm. So my monitor goes down. Okay. So one of the workarounds, cause we didn't want to take impressions was we were able to plug in a mouse okay, mm-hmm. and still use it. Now, let me just tell you, you try using a mouse in an operatory mm-hmm. during a during a crown and bridge procedure okay you try using a trackpad on a laptop okay with gloves on right during a crown and bridge procedure okay try implementing that and i told yep. john this the other day whenever he was looking at Meta, i said dude can you use a touch screen and of course they're going to say yes because windows 10 has touch built in but that doesn't mean the software was exactly. designed for the yep. operatory in mind. Okay. Yeah. So, and that's the Sarek stuff that I think it's at this too, John. I think Sarek does right. a good job. Right. Oh yeah, and they I do. Think. They do a great job. And plan Mecca does too. Cause I played with their software as well and they, they've got that down. And I think that's the thing with Medit that I've also, I do have some concerns about again, I've used it just a little, so I'm just, you know, there'll be people that are listening to this. that will say, Oh, it's super easy. And you know, I think anything, you have to be a little careful too to say, you know, because you have it, that's the best kind of thing, right? You know, we yeah, always have to com- take a little grain of salt with that. Bias. That's right. And so be careful when you say well, something's easy because you got to make sure, you know, can you, is it teachable? How teachable is it? It's really the question. That's and I think question. that there's no, there's no question that I've seen over the years tried and true with something like true definition and Sarek. I mean, for instance, those two I'm very familiar with, they're very teachable and, and it doesn't take a long time to get your auxiliaries trained to be able to use the, the software surprisingly intuitive. I haven't played with the other softwares as much. Again, this is where we're going to have people on like Mark to really dive into that with us. But I think the software implementation, the training is huge. Um, everybody that's ever started scanning, I think will tell you that the first week or two is tough. It's tough because you just mm. don't know how to hold your hand quite right. You don't know how far to hold the scanner from the tooth. It takes You're not hundred scans, you know. man. It takes a yeah. hundred scans. Yeah. Man. And it's frustrating for a little it's while and so it's frustrating. It's frustrating for the very slows first. you down. Yeah. And so you're, you're used to being quick. If you're like a triple tray user or something, you know, you're used to a three and a half minute impression. And now your, your first, you know, 10 scans take you seven minutes and you're like, ah, I hate this thing. But you're going to get to a point where it's going to be extremely quick. And now, honestly, Wes and I both, you know, we'll, we'll say that, I mean, we take our prep arch scan on a quadrant in probably, you know, 40 seconds, 30 seconds, mm-hmm. uh, maybe a minute, you know, and the opposing is already done before we even come in the room. So 
you know, it's really not difficult to use these things most of the time. But like you say, touch screen versus mouse, trackball versus trackpad, your own laptop versus an integrated laptop that's or an integrated computer that's already been mm-hmm. part of a cart system. You know, those things do start to add up in some cases when you're when you're talking about the smoothness of use. Should Definitely. you do it, John, right? That's the question. Let's come full circle here for just a second, right? Would we do it again, right? If we had not already made the investment, we would be making the investment. If we were making the investment today, I think we would look hard at Medit. I think we would look yeah. hard at Trios. I think we would look hard at even Seric because they have a stripped down version of that now that starts to compete in price, right? Yep. Because and because now it's starting to be more open, right? Yep. And like that kind of idea of openness is starting to proliferate the market. That's why people like Nobel, Kerr, Midmark, or whatever can now say, "Hey, our scans can be used with a you know a ton of things and a ton of devices mm-hmm. at your laboratory." Well, so and I think too another barrier to implementation <clears throat> is definitely support, ah. and you know. Up till now, Medit was a tinkerer, a tinkerer's kind of toy. You know, you you buy it from a company who would maybe fly out and train you or do virtual training, and then you were on your own unless you lived right down the street from this company because Medit did not have a lot of people to do support. Now you have a company like a Nobel or a Cavo Kerr who comes behind and says, "Well, you buy this from us. We've got a digital support specialist who will come to your office on the do the training." and then come back again in a month or anytime you need uh, you need help or even has a service department behind them who could potentially you know service your stuff as well that does change things if you're hesitant about buying a scanner because you're worried about the support i think medit has done a good job of realizing that that is a barrier to people and realizing that you need to be able to call somebody, yes, but you need to maybe have somebody can come into your office and troubleshoot this stuff with you. And clearly that's what they're doing. So I have to say, again, I think it's heading the right direction. My questions, I think, for Mark, when we have him on the show, are going to be software questions, mm-hmm. interface questions, true, you know, what do they see? Because they're going to be on the bleeding edge of the research. You know, what are they seeing about in vivo data, you know, actual patient scans and what they're seeing come back from Medit versus these other companies from the lab. You know, what's the lab seeing? What's the end result? How much contact adjustment are they having to do? You know, how much occlusal occlusal adjustment are they having to do? Those are the questions that you were not seeing answered yet by these preliminary studies. Mark had some interesting comments regarding full arch workflows, right? for Mm -hmm. the most accurate things that we need, trueness and precision. Um, We need more trueness and precision for implant impressions, right? That's where we really need like full arch workflows for these digital platforms. There are people out there that are teaching this. Trust me, you can go pay and learn how to do this, right? But to put all these pieces together requires someone with a certain level of like, Hey, I'm going to go figure this out because it is Mm -hmm. happening and I'm going to be bleeding edge. Right. And, and cutting edge and really push my office to be the best full arch digital dentist, right. Which can happen. Yeah. But can that be repeated from office to office and trained and implemented? Mark's going to speak, maybe speak to where, where we at with that. Right. I want to know, uh, from Mark, you know, what's up, in the digital market right now we've been it's been a year to 18 months since we've had him on the show um software is interesting right and what could be done with software i was i think john some of the most exciting things in dentistry will come out of intraoral scanning right Mm -hmm. if you're a dentist right now and you're taking initial six uh, pictures of photographs right 2d imaging uh, on your on your patients we use a digital slr camera on all of our patients it's been invaluable in just tracking whatever right right because we have these high res images that we can zoom in on and look at things four and five years ago and see if there are changes but imagine right being able to scan a patient 
really efficiently that you would want to do it every time they're in the hygiene chair at least once a year kind of like x-rays right. and that's and really if you you know that's, that's what itero is trying to really market their scanner for is to actually be used in the hygiene operatory to just do progress you know trios is pushing this way to show changes in wear on teeth exactly and you know that also allows if you have an itero for you to be able to show patients that instant invisalign potential result they could get um so yes that is i think definitely the future where we're going to be gathering data not only with photography potentially but with scanning and radiography and putting together a full picture of the patient more <clears throat> that's integrated into their chart in their in their system and the lab also has access to as well you know that is a powerful thing it's coming um, we are excited about it, but I, I do think the more we learn about it, the more we hear about it, the further off it really is. Yeah. You know, it's 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 we're starting to see it, but again, implementation and yeah, I agree. I think it's a ten-year goal mm -hmm. uh, that we all may have, and I don't even know that we all have it. I think as people don't, a lot of people don't wrong, even know it. But it's, I mean, I think right. you know, I mean, just being a futurist, you know, I like futurism and I'll probably be an early adopter of some of these things, just like I've been in the past, but the older that I get, huh. the less the less malleable I am to futurism because it's not practical for business. And well, so and you see and you see the truth of what doesn't always work, you know, and, and the the there's marketing and then there's truth. And that's I think what we're trying to get across here about the medit. You know, before it was marketing. Now there may be some data that's backing up the marketing. And that's, I think, the thing that we have said since the beginning of the show. We kind of hate this, but we love it at the same time. We like innovation. We like these upstart companies coming in and disrupting the market. But we also know that the, the product is out before there's even data. You know, this product mm -hmm. is approved for use in the mouth, making restorations with no, publica no publications, you know? And, and so we are the testers essentially, and we are the guinea pigs and our patients are our guinea pigs. And we're the ones that are, you know, basically paying the bill if these things don't work. So hey, just John, take that with a grain of salt. Bills, though, John, for this show, right? So that we can produce some high level content is our sponsors. And I just want to give a shout out to the people that support the show, uh, that have supported us the, in the longest, uh, the Dental Crafters Network. We mention those people all the time. They provide some great solutions. They are highly educated in this digital field. If you have a question, yes. reach out to them. We highly recommend that you talk to the Dental Crafters Network about digital dentistry. They see every single scanner on the market. They see yep. every single scanner on the market. And you can talk to some high-level people there, John. Also, I want to thank, um, you know, Restorative Driven Implants. John and I are uh, teachers there, mentors there at the Restorative Driven Implants Continuum of core series courses and uh, we're excited about what's coming up we've really fired that whole thing back up again this year and the spring course is already in the works we did a combination of virtual and in-person distance distance socially distance learning right and it, it was right. really good it's actually turned out to be a fantastic class i'm excited about um going up to northern Wisconsin and actually doing the live inpatient. We appreciate Restorative Driven Implants and their support of the show. And then also Justin Goodbread with uh, Financially Simple. You know Justin, and he's been on the podcast many times, especially during COVID of the last year. We appreciate him. We just couldn't do it without these people. And then really a new sponsor of the show for the next few few episodes over the next couple months is actually Cavo Kerr. And uh, yep. from a standpoint of like their Cavicide wipes, I mean, like, could you have existed in the COVID world without right. Cavicide? Right. Right. And I mean, it's the, it's it's why we call tissues Kleenex, right? Because I think everybody right. knows that when you think about you know, disinfecting wipes, you think about cavi wipes. And by the way, they did not, uh, you know, pay us anything special to talk about the scanner, just in case you're wondering. Yeah. All right, there's, we didn't get a free scanner out of this. I wish, so I wish we had, that would that be we awesome. Quit dentistry with what, you know, our sponsors <laughs> do. We appreciate our sponsors. Right. Because they they make it happen us. for us. They make it happen. They make it happen. And, and of course, in the end, you know, uh, we want to give a huge shout out to our listeners. You know, we've been doing this now for That's a right. long time, Wes. You know, it's yeah. been six years of podcasting. We've had a ton of episodes. We've interviewed some amazing people and the listeners just continue to bring us ideas 
They continue to challenge us. They continue to tell us what they want to hear more of. And they continue to just feed our passion for the highest level of dentistry possible. So thank you for uh, those of you who have been with us this whole time or new listeners to us, even if this is your first show. Uh, we look forward to growing with you and learning more with you over time. If you liked the show, if you liked what we're uh, what we're all about, give us uh, give us some feedback. That's the way that we get our information out there. The best way you can do that is go to Apple Podcasts and give us a five star review. That's a huge way people can find out about us through that. Also, uh, hit us up on social media. Let us know what you thought about the show. Share the show with your friends uh, through social media, things like YouTube. Uh, you can share it and uh, subscribe, of course. And uh, also hit us up to just give us a like or a follow so we know who you are and we know that you are plugged in to what we're doing. As we said, I have lots of great shows coming up here in the next couple of months. So stay tuned. Uh, it's, it's been, a, it's been a, a crazy year, but we're ready to be back doing some normal things uh, with the show, like just going to meetings and bringing, continue to bring you the highest level dentistry that we know how to find out there. So it's been another great episode for Wes. I'm John. And we are the Dental Guys.